an econ class, if they come up on something, and then there's consultation back to me, and I say, oh, but this is also a student who committed an academic integrity code violation a year ago in an SIS course. All right, now we know it's their second violation. That changes things. We actually had a case like that this last semester where something came up where a student was coming up through the process in CAS, and then I recognized the name and said, wait a minute. And so then we We've had two of those. Yeah. No, I mean, had one, just had one with another unit. Yeah, and so then, we ch so, so then it changes it because the student has to, be, has to understand that it's much more serious when you get into the second time here. Um, my usual go-to first penalty for a, like a first-year student is, is either fail the course or fail the assignment, depending on how bad it was. By the time we get past that, then we're into fail the course and, and possibly, I mean, I've, and I've been doing this now for three years. I think I've only had to actually suspend one student, um, but there have been several where I've had other, other kinds of penalties associated with it. And we've had some of our students who have gotten themselves into trouble in other units that I've had to concur in a number of other things, but in terms of actually some framing. So I guess the I guess the punchline here would be, and it's the same thing I tell students, I tell faculty to tell students, and I tell students too. If you are in doubt about whether something is a violation of the academic integrity code, you should be consulting. You should be talking to somebody. For a student, the proper person to talk to is the faculty member. For the faculty member, the proper person to talk to is in the unit someplace. Right? It's either the academic integrity officer, possibly the department chair, depending on how things are, are kind of organized in, in your local unit. But because this is not a mechanical matter of simply applying a set of statistical rules, because this involves judgment, the only way you come up with a reasonable position here is by talking it out with people and by kind of thinking through it. And so I always encourage that kind of, of consultation. Once the process officially starts, then we got a university mandated timeline, and there's not much anybody can do about it at that point. So. What I'm, I'm, I'm certain there are questions still floating in the room. Frank, yeah. Um, if I catch someone, or if I suspect someone yeah. of an active integrity code violation, I'm talking, you know, personally, internally. Mm -hmm. There's also student evaluation of teaching scores that are coming along there. And so there's this, you know, inherent, all right, this kid's going to give me a zero or a one or whatever mm -hmm. on my student evaluation of teaching. Um, how do I finesse this such that, right. you know, because, yeah. because it's, you know, it's sort of like the, right. the offender still being allowed to, you right. know, right. Well, what pass I judgment on the... The judge uh, or the accuser. And, I, I and, hear you. I've been in three conversations problem. already at this conference this morning, and sets have come up yeah. in various contexts mm -hmm. it, three different times. Now it's Here, also yeah. worked if other students see you're you're serious about right. academic integrity code violations, they love it. That's you know, right. Because they 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 yeah. see yeah. the kids cheating, yeah. uh, and and they go you know hey this guy's finally you know, finally what? a professor's doing something about it. Right. Great. So all seven. Yeah. And so what, what I tell um, um, teachers is to say directly to the student, especially if you're concerned that not only I'm going to get dinged on my student evals, but, mm -hmm. but the student is still, after all, a character in the drama. The student is sitting in your class the next week, likely, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and so I say, say this to students, I, look, I, I know that this might seem um, um, awkward and uncomfortable. I am required by the university to refer this case to, in the case of CIS, mm -hmm. to the academic integrity administrator. I, 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 I would be in breach of my contract. It sounds like highfalutin language, right? But it resonates with students mm -hmm. if I didn't. And so really, I hope you can understand that. They get that. Mm -hmm. And I think that can mitigate the, the kind of adversarial hostility. <laughs> yeah. if, a, if a student, I mean, in the end, there's, that, that, that's still a problem, but if you try to resolve cases quickly, yeah. if a student fails a course, they're out of that class. They're no longer a student in that class. But they still, have. you know, fill out the no. teaching evaluation. Oh, no. No, they do no. not. They, they're not supposed to, they're, not, they're no longer, you know, yeah. they're, are, they're out of the class. Right. They, so, they, they should be removed if, from the if roster it, if it's, Well, if it's, if it's been adjudicated right. quickly right. enough. Right. Yeah. We, we try to do, yeah, try it's to the end of semester stuff where it gets complicated. Yeah, yeah. that's right. 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 What about um, 
an example of trying to diffuse the situation. What I mean is, um, let's say you give them an exam and you see some some kid looking over the shoulder. What you think you see that kid looking over the shoulder of a very good student who's in front of them, and um, you don't think much of it. You know, people just think you know look with all over during the test. They don't really mean much. But then you see it again. So what about then you just move the move the kids, mm -hmm. um, like move, but not single out the one kid. You say I'd, I'd like the whole first row yeah. to move up. No, that's close. a really good idea. Yeah. Well, that, I've done but, that. Yeah. When, I, I, when I, I started, that. this was back when you could that's get good. away with more stuff. The first class I was assigned was a class of 900 by the environmental science. So believe me, there was cheating. So what we did was we just we had you know we had the exam we had a real simple thing that we did first time we saw someone looking over his shoulder we walk up tore the exam out, tore their exam out <laughs> threw them out of the exam now we still let them take the exam but they took it outside let me tell you that was an enormously effective deterrent that was unfair right. you can't do that now you'd probably get sued but I think your idea of, of moving people is a really good one. There was, uh, I mean, people have used different colored exams. You can get really clever. You can have one exam and just print it on two different colors, yeah. or you can have two exams on one color, and, and all, right. Of, right. And, and all of those things, right. I, I think, are, mm -hmm. are, 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 are useful. Um, version A, version but, B. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, right. I didn't so, want to so, single so. out with the person, because I wasn't right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. sure. So I moved three people. <coughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it seemed to work. I, had, I put the person I, I suspected right in front of me, mm -hmm. literally right in front of me, so that, that person couldn't do anything anymore. So no, no, I think it's I think it, those kinds of things. See, we're so good. I, mean, I think in general we're really good about doing stuff in exams. We've got lots of ways yeah. so that the mm -hmm. that the mm -hmm. cupcake or the cookie isn't exactly. on the counter. We're not so good with papers. I, I just wanted to comment yeah. about teachable moments. Is that. That's a great phrase. It always means somebody's really screwed up big time. I think of teachable moments just when I start to lecture, but that's a... Uh, that, that as, as Patrick said, if there's some doubt, one of the things you can do is have them redo the assignment. That's within the... That's right on the edge of what, what you can do. You can say, look, you know, this was too similar to something, and I want you to, to redo it. That's within your... That, that's within what you, what, what you can do, and, and I think that... Um, that is important to say, you know, look, you're, you're, you're straying over the line. That's, you know, I'm never going to know about that anyway, nor is Patrick. Right. Uh, uh, but I think that's a way to, to, to also reduce it. I think I misspoke a little bit about the involvement of the chair. The chair doesn't have to be involved. You can send the thing straight to me. But you're right. going to ask the chair for advice. Right. It's, not, it's not that it's a secret. It's just that it's not part of the official, you know, route. And, and, exactly. and your chair... Has a lot of experience with, uh, not not because economists cheat. Let me back up on this. Because Tom used to be associate dean. That's going to sound like yeah. Uh, yeah. Anybody in econ knows all about cheating. That's not what I meant. But he, he has a lot of just parenthetically, the two fields that um, have a disproportion of cheating across higher education. This is not an American University uh, uh, observation. Are um, engineering and business. And it's been consistent for a couple of decades now that those are the two. For, uh, make of it what you will. I don't know that I make anything of it. There was a question here. Let's let's do that first. Oh, I just had a couple of comments to sort of tie things together. Um, as I was telling you, I'm new. This is my second year teaching. I have a son in college somewhere else, and so I use him as my sounding board. And so the first time I showed him one of my tests, I said, "This is seem like you know he's actually studying the same field, the right caliber." Of, yep. You know. And then he goes, where's the thing that you signed at the beginning, saying yeah. that, like, and so I, I made something for this, not knowing that we don't do this here at the university, but, so I'm not doing that anymore, but a couple things that I think I've done that I think set the tone, if you give a test early in the semester, maybe it will carry over to just, like, the, the professors on top of things, and that their papers are going to be scrutinized more carefully. Like, I am sort of a stickler. I was amazed at all the kids that want to go to the bathroom during a test <laughs> and with cell phones and everything, and it just didn't ring right with me. So now I make a big deal, like, please use the restroom before the test. And I say it nicely, so because yeah. I'm concerned with test scores, too, and I don't want to be perceived as a doubting Thomas. But just, I think, maybe just by being, you know, perceive that you're not out of it, that you're kind of thinking about these things without being such a hard ass. Right. a nice way to set 
the tone that yeah. hopefully will lead. One of Donald McCabe, I, I mentioned before Donald McCabe, um, one of his articles ends, and this may be verbatim, but it may not be, so I'm covering myself. Um, it, it, after a long, complicated study with, with lots of data, he said, essentially, it comes down to this. Students will cheat less if they think the teacher cares about cheating. And there are lots of ways yeah. that we can signal that yeah. we care. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, that's a powerful observation, I think. I have to collect the test, like I don't keep them out there, yep. you know, the test, I don't, and I, but I've never gotten any guidance from the university yeah. you know, any of these things, so I guess it's just personal practice, right? Yeah. Just a quick, quick comment, even though when I decided to come here, I knew that the student is guilty as charged because your title is when, <laughs> so it happened. But really and truly, uh, I think it will be helpful uh, probably in future seminars is to discuss why a student cheat. Yeah. And from my vantage point, I am in business, as a businessman and educator, I, I think partially the, the way we structure exams, the expectations and so on and, and so forth, is partially responsible for that. But in the meantime, at least what I do in my classes, as you suggested, the, the, there is a proposal, there is interaction with right. students. We mostly in my classes, do I have group projects, so we have a group of people. And then one, one of the I ideas that I always use or practice is that the students as a group, they submit a draft. Right. So I review the draft, and if there is hanky-panky, I will tell them <laughs> in a nice way. So the final draft, the final version, which is going to be graded, they will be responsible. Right. So my point is that, that really and truly, the way I look at it, at least in my age, I'm not looking at the student as a student. This student is going to be a senator, a congressman, a governor, a CEO, a Madoff, Farid uh, Zakaria, and so on and so forth. Yeah. It is a long list. So my duty is, <laughs> my duty is, my duty is to create the environment by which I emphasize ethics. Yep. Yeah. And by the way, I think when you talk about business, probably these kind of cases by which a student is supposed to calculate and uh, calculate the yield and so on and yeah. so forth, these stupid uh, formulas that we expect students to learn all the time, which is un unfair. Thank you. Good. One last question. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Um, my question is actually, uh, do you handle uh, cheating by international students differently from the one by American students? Oh. Like, do you see any difference there at all? <laughs> yeah, can I respond to that? Yeah, I, I, I need to say something about that too. Okay, I think we all want to. The short, take the a short shot answer here. is no. But there's a perception that that international students are disproportionately represented right. in academic integrity code cases, and I haven't done all of the figures. But the the short answer to that is no, they are not. But what are disproportionately represented in in, uh, in academic integrity code cases are students that are failing a course or perceive that they're failing a course and see that they have no other way to pass the course by their, by their own wit and work. And so if, you, if that's true for an international student in college writing, but it's also true for non-international, right. it would be so nice if all the domestic students were, had strong English skills. Uh, so from my perspective, no, we don't, you know, we don't, we, we try to make sure that they understand it. But I, I have not encountered cases, uh, even though I know it's part of our culture, where somebody says, ah, oh, in, you know, in country X, it's, it's perfectly allowable to plagiarize, and now it's not true. I just have not seen those cases. I think it's partly because international student uh, groups as, as a whole do a good job of educating students about the academic integrity code so that if they don't know about it, it's because they didn't go to a s several set sets of meetings, uh, and also I'm actually personally not convinced which country it is that, that says plagiarism is, a, is is a good thing. I, so I think it's kind of an urban myth. Well, I th mm -hmm. in 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 my experience, I do get international students saying that all the time. Oh yeah, and so that argument certainly shows up on a regular basis. The the one difference in terms of the process that that at least that I follow is if it is an international student 
um, before I finally make a decision in the case, I will chat with international students and scholars just to see if there's anything else sort of going on here that right. might somehow be relevant. Not relevant in the sense of it should excuse the behavior, but so that I have a fuller picture of the context. Again, I go back to my understanding of academic integrity as being about intent. The student needs to have <coughs> intended to pass off somebody else's words as their own. Again, and I'm, I'm brack, I, let me be a little more specific here. We don't, I've never had an academic integrity code case having to do with a test, and that's largely because we don't do tests in SIS for the most part. We don't do seated exams in most of our courses. Um, and uh, when in the courses where we do, I've not had issues of that sort that, that have arisen. So mostly what I'm talking about here is I'm talking about papers, essays, I'm talking about things where the student is writing stuff and then not sort of citing uh, what it is that they have, that they've actually borrowed the words from. I've had international students who've come in and said, my English isn't good and I just couldn't find the words. Yeah. Said, well, okay, except that that's actually not an excuse, that's an explanation, but it yeah. doesn't excuse the fact that what you did is intended to pass somebody else's words off as your own and therefore you committed an academic integrity code violation and there's that. Um, so uh, so I will get, we'll get those sort of things. The only time in which I might hesitate a little bit would be if it's if there's visa issues involved with the student, and then it's a question of let me chat with international students and scholars and make sure we all understand what the visa implications of this are. I have I have assigned a penalty of failure and immediate withdrawal for a class which has caused a student to drop down below credit minimum, which has caused a student to be deported. Um, and that's a really hard lesson for the yep. student to learn. But on the other hand, this particular student should not have done the fairly egregious thing that this particular student did in the class. Um, and, and now, but the thing is, in order to make all this work, in order for me to like be able to sleep at night about this, it also has to be the case that the message about what is, what 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 counts as legitimate citation, is actually being communicated. Now, I know with international students, interestingly, they get more of this yeah. more explicitly than a lot of the other students do. Because International Students and Scholars does a whole module in International Student Orientation specifically on this. So it is prima facie implausible for an international student to say, I didn't know. No, you did. Maybe you didn't understand, but you knew. It was there. We've tried very hard with our SIS first year seminars and our mentorship program to make sure the students are getting equal amounts of preparation as to what is required and how the code works so that they're actually able to do it. So then we can legitimately say to them, no, you can't say you didn't know. You knew. If it wasn't the case that the student knew, there have been occasional situations in which there are transfer students who have kind of slipped through, who haven't actually gone through and done this, and have come from other sorts of places in which I've said, all right, you know what? At the end of the day, this may be one of those occasions where you legitimately did not know what was going on here, and we have to think about the penalty in that way. So it's, you're going to get a grade reduction or you're going to fail this assignment, but you can rewrite it and it'll get average with the grade or something along those lines. I've done things like that, but yet for very, very specific restricted kinds of circumstances. Just maybe a last comment because I do yeah. have my eye on the clock and folks want lunch. Yes. <laughs> David, you were going to... Oh, I'm just going to say that we also invite the International Student uh, Services Advisor. We also do it for athletes as well. So. And, and the, because there are, there are special academic advisors for athletes as well. So the more information that we can get, the context the more the, you know the, 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 the more it is. But I, I don't think that international students are, are differentially involved in this. There are, uh, I'm not sure I say it about athletes, but I would certainly be comfortable saying that international students um, are, are not differentially. Uh, Though there are national statistics that seem to indicate that Chinese students in particular have challenges when yep. it comes to this. And so as the demographics of the student population mm -hmm. at AU evolve, it's entirely possible we may see more of that. Um, but in particular, in technical programs at big state universities, they have noticed a statistically significant differential with Chinese students mm -hmm. in, terms of, uh, in terms of cheating and plagiarism. So we don't have an engineering school.